All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Cool's Reviews. It's our first non-paranormal one in a tiny bit. So we chose The American Experience Jesse James by PBS. Uh, it's a pretty good one, American Experience we've done before, and they've never felt us. So hopefully they don't fell us here. As usual, my name is Keegan. Joining me today is... Hello, I'm Sam. Yeah, so this one had a few different historians in it, as well as one author. Uh, that author was T.J. Styles, who wrote Jesse James, The Last Rebel of the Civil War. And you can definitely see more of his influences and works uh, within this documentary. as more of a more Civil War orientated uh, goal and just overall reason they're doing what they're doing. So going into that, though, I think overall it is a good documentary and it really helps kind of do the basics. I mean, Jesse James wasn't active for a long time, though he was active more than, say, a Billy the Kid, who was really not active that long as far as the whole outlaw life. Uh, But it is interesting to see at least some of the uh, beginning stages as well as the bullet points i would say as well as some of the locations that i've been able to visit myself which is pretty exciting to see it anymore when i see things that aren't historically accurate now that i've been into the locations it kind of is like oh that's not the location but at least here they show pictures of the james farm and where jesse james was shot by robert ford in st joe missouri so We'll go to Sam. Sam, how much uh, did you know about Jesse James going into this documentary? So I don't, I didn't know too much about him. Yeah, I didn't know too much about him. And this was kind of like an insight on it. I think I always get Jesse James kind of mixed up with James Dean just because they're, I don't know. I mean, they both got James in their name. They both have James in their name, so I kind of. Mix the two up, even though they're from very different times. Very different times. Same time, every time. Both kind of from that like Midwest. Obviously, Dean's from Indiana, uh, though. I mean, pretty famous for his stuff in his works in New York and Hollywood. Whereas, you know, uh, Jesse James was active mainly in Missouri. Uh, we do see some stuff in Arkansas, Alabama, and Kentucky. Um, his family was from Kentucky, so that kind of makes sense. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, he's got to have places to run and hide. We definitely see what happened when he did it outside of like his comfort zone in Northfield, uh, where they tried to rob the bank up in Northfield, Minnesota, and it did not go very well for the James gang because, you know, especially by that time with the daylight bank robberies now kind of being a thing, obviously when the James gang started it really wasn't a big thing and some people say they invented it and so this is why you know it was a little bit easier especially maybe in the more lax place like the places they were hitting where there's a little bit more sympathy for the boys uh, compared to the north where they just saw some strangers riding up with guns and then they were like no we're not letting this happen but again it goes into that really kind of helps build his legend Because, I mean, it's pretty remarkable either way that he was able to go from Minnesota to uh, Missouri and then into uh, Nashville, Tennessee on foot. Really no weapons. He's injured. You know, outside of him and Frank, all the other members are either killed or captured. So that's definitely a really big, like, moment. Sort of like uh, how when Billy the Kid escaped Lincoln by killing Bob Ollinger and J.W. Bell. And right away, that really cemented him as a legendary figure and something that were mythologies would be built upon. Sam, though, going into this, really learning a lot more about Jesse James. Um, how would you like what were some things you learned from this documentary? Since this one was pretty Confederate driven, I learned a lot about like the guerrilla groups and what more of what they did because they didn't really tell you much about them in you like briefly touch upon them in like schools but they don't tell you like what all they did for obvious reasons yeah i mean the guerrilla groups exp- i mean they were all pretty brutal but uh, uh Crentrell's raiders are known for like 
some of the most bloody things, especially when they're describing the scene um, with the Kansas stuff. It is uh, not for the weakest stomach, especially. Well, I mean, the descriptions are one thing, but I think uh, one of the historians, she's like, but imagine like the sounds and the smells. And I'm like, that. I think that's where it kind of clicks in your brain. You're like, Ugh. I mean, I guess it's war. And especially the Civil War was super brutal. But at the same time, those writers were unarmed or the uh, victims were all unarmed. So it was uh, pretty brutal. And I mean, just like the rest of the uh, Civil War, pretty, pretty brutal event. I think a lot of times especially in big Hollywood movies, it's actually kind of sanitized and cleaned. I mean, we've seen it in Gettysburg where, I mean, it's back and forth, but it's pretty clean still compared to like, I mean, there's a scene in Lincoln with just Lincoln riding through the dead. And it's one of the better representations because it is not a very nice war. No war is nice, but I mean, it was extreme, extremely brutal I don't, I don't know. It was a very dark part of our history. That it was. But now I'm joining in and like essentially one of the most brutalist parts and then just kind of molding him from there and the rest of the people that were a part of that. Yeah. And you wonder how much of those events kind of like morphed who he was and molded him as an adult. Cause like I know in here they're like, I mean, not one historian's like he he was a victim of the times as well as himself, which is going more into the end of his life. But I mean, definitely in a young age when the Civil War breaks out, I mean, obviously his parents are influencing his decisions. And then the whole, you know, attack at by some Union soldiers where he's beaten at the farm. I mean, I'm sure that's going to skew you. And then especially once you're placed and you're kind of desensitized to war, you wonder how that just affects you long term. You know, what are the mental implications of that? And he was being at the farm. His mother was like taken to jail and his His stepfather was like hung. Was he hung or was he like just uh, like death? I, I think if I remember, he was like lynched. Because if I remember right on the farm, when you go there at the museum today, they actually kind of show you where it happened. I guess I just misheard that because I thought it was like he was like, oh, like could barely hear. And then again, it goes back to like towards the end of it, you see Frank being able to see like, okay, this is it. Like. Clearly, this isn't working. It's not worth it. And he's able to separate those two. But it seems like Jesse James was just not able to. Nah, he liked being in the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the uh, trademarks of a James robbery is usually he left little notes for them to publish. And they usually did, too. So I'm sure that doesn't help. We don't usually see that today. I mean... More recently, uh, with the Zodiac Killer, you saw that kind of stuff where like things would get published or this and that, but not not to this extent, especially because it was very uh, politically motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, they were trying to build this like sympathy for the South at the time, which is like totally factually true. Like um, Edwards was like just writing this stuff to try to like pamper but even by the end he kind of backed away he was like no i can't justify it when i think too you see like kind of gray on both sides in this one i mean obviously we already talked about like the uh lint like hanging of his father and beating him when they were looking for frank but then also like the pinkertons i mean i guess yeah, they did kill the Pinkerton detective uh-huh. who went in there. But then they come back and bomb the house. Yeah, and then the public kind of was like, now kind of for Jesse James. Right. Just because it's just like, all right, I mean, that's a little far. 
Yeah, I mean, be a little bit far just trying to like get after somebody, but not even knowing if they're actually there or not, and then just bombing a house and running away. Right. Yeah. No, they uh, they definitely. I mean, by this time, Azura had kind of had enough of the gang, where it was causing issues with the housing market and railroads and stuff like this, where they were like threatening not to come through and stuff. So, yeah, townsfolk were definitely upset with the gang, but at the same time, they were not thrilled that the Pinkertons decided to just come blow up a house with what they deemed as an old lady and a small child in the house. And it killed Archie Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, maimed, you know, Zerelda. And, yeah, you just see it's like it's a very murky situation. I mean, clearly... The James gang is doing bad things. But do you do bad things to fight bad things? And were there bad things caused by... I mean, that's where it's like, oh, this is like a hugely murky situation. This did help with the legend building of Jesse James and actually built into the legend of, yeah, no, it seemed definitely like he was being targeted by northern people. And so that's where it differs from, like, a Brushy Bill story where, like, he has a myth, but there's, like, no evidence. Whereas Jesse James' myth, yeah, there's actually some evidence to it, you know. Uh So uh, what are some other things you can take away from this one, Sam? Um, I like that he um, met Billy the Kid in Las Vegas. They didn't say that. And... uh... (laughs) Um, I had one, but no, I just immediately forgot it. Oh, that he was kind of like, uh, they presented themselves as like upper class outlaws where like they had like fancy outfits compared to like most others. Yeah, it seems like at least by most accounts, Jesse James tried to dress up. I mean, he was able to go around town under aliases like Thomas Howard uh, and kind of put himself out as like a cattle magnet or a cattle rancher like with lots of money so clearly he was able to dress himself well i think in a lot of pictures you see him dressed up nice so definitely different than what i think we see in like western outlaws or the wild west Mm -hmm. where it's more of dirty and grimy where this one i mean definitely could get dirty and grimy i'm sure that ride back from Northfield, like I was saying, pretty dirty. But for the most part, like I said, it's in locations where they have allies and they can change and keep up appearances and change, swap out horses. Yeah. I mean, and they were using multiple, you know, pistols and stuff like that instead of just having one. This tactic they learned from the guerrilla times and guerrilla warfare right which is a pretty intense tactic the fact that they were getting so close to the enemy yeah and showing no fear which kind of it made the opposition have a fear for them because they almost didn't act human where like you know even people in war are going to show something most people there's always going to be like uh, you know that person that doesn't or doesn't show it you know but yeah in that time it definitely was different and you know they hadn't seen things like this because you know it's just it's in between like more world war one warfare and more still in line with the we line up and then shoot type of warfare true and so this was definitely a weird time uh, for war and yeah definitely scared people just like almost like these unhuman emotions and like you know if you see stories perhaps they were like demons or possessed or something just you know which i mean if you also see like the outcome i mean you can see why they thought that too i mean it talks about some of the robberies you know not not a whole lot but it does you know talk about when he thought he had killed bloody bill's killer which he did to just happen to be a guy that kind of looked like him. 
and then he ran away with some bank papers and bank notes and didn't turn out to be a successful bank robbery. Right. Uh, we previously touched upon Northfield, but then there's the train raid. Um, definitely a few train raids. And this is, again, where they were able to kind of build the myth that they were attacking just Union trains. And I don't know if that's ever been, like, actually backed up. Checked out. Yeah, I'm sure it has, but it definitely seems like more they just knew which ones had better, you know, payouts in a way. I think at that time, all trains would be Union trains for the most part. But then after Norfield, it does show that, you know, Frank James had gone out. He didn't want to do this anymore. And okay. Jesse James was getting highly paranoid at this time, it definitely looks like. Much as, you know, there's wanted posters and you really don't have that support system anymore, you can definitely see why someone will get paranoid, especially when you're doing what he was doing, right? Sure. With like a kind of like a brand new crew ish. Yeah. Well, maybe and people weren't from like the wars or just backcountry murderers. Yeah. Not even, some of them weren't even murderers. Like some had no like experience with a gun and just kind of like the idea of Jesse James or the myth of Jesse James, oh. i.e. Robert Ford. But yeah, he, he kind of formulates some smaller ones. Um, you see it with like Wood Height and stuff. Uh, who was his cousin? Wood Height ends up getting killed by Robert Ford as well. And Robert Ford obviously hides this because he doesn't want Jesse James to know because he's afraid. He It's weird because it, Towards the end of his life, even though he's getting paranoid, I almost wonder, too, if he kind of set himself up to be killed by Robert Ford. Because it just... No, 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 none of these. He, he got killed. Because, you know, he's taken all these stuff. He did kill another member of his gang at this time because he had heard whispers that they were going to turn him in or collect reward money and you know Robert Ford kind of makes it seem like he didn't have any other choice but to kill him at that time which getting back to my point it it seems weird that he took off his guns and then stood on a chair and got shot Especially having stood in that room. That's the ceiling. What? How so you can touch the ceiling. It's a small... Let's see if I can find it. So that shows you the room is not very tall. Because you can see the top right there. The area he got shot at. Yeah, see, there, there's me just like, oh, no, don't shoot me, Brendan. Okay, I can kind of see if you would need a chair, maybe. I mean, it's it's not... I mean, where the picture is, yeah. It's not a very big room. And that's why it's always kind of weird to me that he takes off his guns and then goes to the opposite side of the room. And in a way, I do think he maybe set himself up to let Bob Ford do this. You know, Charlie Ford was very scared of this situation. He ended up committing suicide later down the road because of it. Um, Bob Ford would go on a tour and kind of recite what had happened for a while. Um, but even he was starting to feel the public outcry against him. He moves up to Creed, Colorado here. Opens up a saloon. Seems like not the best citizen. He gets kind of kicked out. He goes down to Walsenburg, which we checked out his house one time. And then goes back up to Creed. There's a fire, so he's kind of in a temporary one at the time. And it ends up getting shot and killed by Ed O'Kelly uh, because he wanted to get revenge on the guy. Or that's what he said. He wanted the revenge on the guy that killed Jesse James. Bob Ford oh. ends up getting buried up in Creed and eventually moved because of gray robbers and stuff out to Missouri with his brother, um, Frank. You know, lives a while in Missouri. Also lives a while in Texas and Dallas as a shoe salesman, if I am correct. And he moves back. He ends up dying and gets buried in Liberty. 
Uh, we've also visited those graves. And as far as Jesse, like his mom, even there, it said she was offered money to have her son's body been put on display, which is really weird. Like those times were weird where people are just like buying corpses and putting them on display happened a lot. I mean, we can talk about that uh, hoax John Wilkes Booth or some people would say the real John Wilkes Booth body that was mummified and just put on display. And, you know, there was people trying to rob, you know, grave dig famous celebrities. And like, it was a weird time. I don't know. I could not imagine them doing something like that today. Like, could you? That would be so weird. No, uh, that would be pretty weird. Honestly, with our society, yeah, I wouldn't put it past them at this point. Like, just with how strange everybody is, I wouldn't put it past it coming back. But it would still be really weird. I mean, they were buying rocks that were supposed to have been from her, or been from his uh, grave. And, you know, Jesse's mom ran out, so she was just getting, like, pebbles from the stream, which is a beautiful area down there on the James mm-hmm. farm. Like, the tr- right. just being near the trees and stuff. Being out there, like, in Kentucky or southern Indiana and stuff like that, it's just so forestry. Mm-hmm. It, so much of the forest and the woods, it just it's amazing. But, yeah, she would just go run down there and pick up pebbles and sell them for 25 cents. Friend James... He had a misspelling in the sign that was photographed with him. And so he eventually figured out somehow, I don't remember how, and he just penciled it in. But he never updated, like, the picture or had anyone come take an updated picture. And so people would come bet him, and he would win the bets. And Just an interesting story. Um, Z Mims and the children kind of live in poverty. Just They don't get any... Of the riches. Um, there was a book written by Jesse James Jr. I think I have it over there on the shelf. Kind of describing stuff. But I mean we've had quite a few there. And it it really doesn't get into a lot of that. Once Jesse James is killed. The documentary is kind of over. Kind of briefly states some stuff. But doesn't really look at what happens to everyone. In full detail. Outside of saying like yeah. Zerelda was in dire straits. And needed to sell pebbles you know or contemplated even giving her son's body away for ten thousand dollars you know z mims had you know wrote the book you know even frank james gone in but it doesn't really talk about like what happens to bob and charlie which is kind of odd to me i think it would this is something i think does the assassination of jesse james the movie does really well because it shows you the aftermath and kind of like them dealing with the consequences it's just where they decided to end the documentary i just would have personally liked to have a little bit more on the charlie and bob ford stuff because it does show that just how they're grappling with what happened at one point i think it was even to a newspaper man uh bob ford said he regretted what he had done to Jesse and what she hadn't done it and what she would was here with him because it had gotten that bad. Like he was getting death threats every day about it and he couldn't find jobs. Like it, it so it would have been kind of nice to see more of that, but overall, I don't know. I think it was good. Yeah. I mean, I think the reason they didn't dive into that is because it was a Jesse James kind of documentary for the most part. So it wouldn't like dwell upon that. Whereas like, a movie kind of would have done that or their own documentaries, but nobody's going to maybe you were, like, a. Buff- you were going to say no one's going to make those documentaries. And you know, now I'm going to make those documentaries. But yeah, as a Jesse James documentary, like I said, it was a, uh, it's a good documentary. I, I recommend it. I'm sure there's people that aren't going to enjoy this one. Uh, just because of how Jesse James is portrayed. And how they say he died. I don't think that's really <laughs> there's there's okay. There'll be some people, but for the majority, I don't think there's a lot of people. The fact that J Frank Dalton is like still considered to be like Jesse James 
is hilarious to me. And I've been to the grave of J. J. Frank Dalton. Throw that up there. But uh, J. Frank Dalton, real quick, was uh, claimed to be Jesse James. And a one brushy Bill Roberts came out claiming to not be Billy the Kid at that time, but a member of the James gang. He also had claimed to be Frank James at another time. So, you know, J. Frank Dalton also gets his name from a U.S. Marshal he claimed to be. So, you know, just birds of a feather, as they would say, right? Right. Especially when you consider also that small little area also had a couple of fake John Wilkes Booth people. I think that's where the mummy one came from, was from Texas. Interesting times. We should go down there and be like, what's in the water? Why are all these people doing this? Or what is attracting all these people, as Sam would might want me to say? Why are all these famous outlaws coming to this small area of Texas and hanging out together? Century-old question, my friend. Yeah, I guess it is a century-old question. I think it's still good. Like I said, it gives... A pretty good brief description of the James career. Like I said, it's a longer career for outlaws. Usually outlaw careers are really pretty short. Billy the Kid was just over a year. And his wasn't really... uh, I don't classify him as an outlaw. More as just somebody that had bad luck. I guess he was living outside the law. So I guess I would consider him an outlaw. But very different than Jesse James. Jesse James has always been one of my favorite subjects and we've kind of briefly touched upon some of the locations like the James farm, as well as the Jesse James home. One of which the Jesse James home was featured in an article. So go check the article out as well. Has our pictures in it. So that was pretty exciting. But uh, Sam, what about you? Would you recommend this and what would you rate it? I mean, if you want some Jesse James history and some civil war history, yeah, I would recommend it. As far as a rating, go with six. A six. Okay. See, I, I'd say a pretty solid eight. Um, it does. It doesn't get as high as some of the Billy the Kid ones we watched or the other American Experience, just because I do feel there's a little bit more we could have added on. This one's only about 51 minutes, I believe. But it is good. It does cover quite a bit of Civil War, and again. It seems like a majority of the time is in the Civil War, but I guess what the documentary is trying to say is this is kind of what molded him, and he never got out of that mindset. True. Which, I think he would still... I think he would have gotten out of it. I wish they would have just brought up more of, like, his stuff outside of the Civil War. I guess. Yeah, more of just the different banks or more of his aliases and his movements and stuff like that. They do cover it, but it is a bit brief. Um, And I don't know, maybe we'll have to look at this book. It's not super long, but it's it's decent length. It's not a brushy bill length, so that's always a good sign. It's a brief 500 pages or something like that, so not bad, not bad. But yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. It seems like with Outlaws, there's not they're hard to really nail down good documentaries but i think this is a solid solid documentary american experience pbs doesn't do bad so i definitely recommend it as well eight out of ten but yeah we'll definitely have to come back to jesse james uh we have done some other jesse james related videos on our channel so if you want to see those at the end of this video there'll be a link to your bottom left but yeah let us know What did you think of Jesse James, the American Experience documentary? And is there a Jesse James movie or location you want us to check out? Let us know in the description below. But until next time, for more of us here at Cools Paranormal, click that link over to Sam. For more Cools reviews, click that link to your left. Like I said, that bottom left is going to be for Jesse James videos. And if you like this and want to see more reviews and other things we're doing, don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe. Switch that notification bell from personalized to all. If you want to be updated on all of our videos. And let us know. Also, did you read this book?